Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Grimm's Podcast. And today in gaming, we're going to talk about Ark Survival Evolved. Now, for some backstory first, to put you in the frame of mind. Normally, this is how a game gets developed, okay? There's a developer company and there's a production company. The production company is where it all starts. They're the ones footing the bill. The developers are the ones that physically make the game. So that's how it starts, right? The, produc the producers come in with all the money. They pay you to make the game. You take, usually, in, in today's world, it's about a year and a half to three years, somewhere in that time frame, to create said video game, publish it, and hopefully that the publishers are happy with the amount of sales you get. Okay? Now, uh, today it's a little different. It's, uh, and in Ark's case, it was very different. Now, Ark started development in October of the year 2015. Uh, sorry, in 2014. Okay, and then by... Let me double check my cell numbers first. Yep, October 2014. And it was released about halfway through 2015. Not as, uh... A completed game, but it was released into early access, which was already popular at the time. Again, for frame of reference, Seven Days to Die, a game I play a lot on this channel, uh, first entered early access in 2013. It's still there in 2023. <laughs> Just so you know, okay? Uh, so in 2015, Ark was published to Steam and online became one of the best-selling games on Steam. Kind of redefined how survival... Survival games are made today. Survival crafting, exploration, whatever you want to call it. Um, it was extremely popular, although it was also extremely buggy. Uh, excuses at the time, of course, were the typical. It's early access, it's not done yet, you know, you have to, to give it some time. Now, the game would see official release in 2017. And would be also released that year for consoles as well. Um, and would see its first DLC, that re payment required DLC, in 2016, a year before it was actually published. <laughs> and this is where we start getting into our first controversy. Now, leading up to this paid DLC, which was a big deal at the time, the game was still in early access and it was charging for extra content, okay? Um, a lot of players that first year were making requests for more optimization. Of course, again, the difficulty in having a game in early access, you have to optimize it enough to make it playable, but you're obviously not going to be able to, to finish it, so you, you get this, this middle spot. And early access games are always pretty buggy. They're going to crash. They're going to have bugs. And uh, part of your job as playing early access, actually as a player, is to report those bugs so the developers can have a chance to fix them. Okay, so that, that's part of early access, but it, ARC, when it was out that first year, it was very rough, uh, a lot of bugs, a lot of crashes, and a lot of major issues just trying to play the game, so people, players were asking for more optimization, and uh, better performance, and they were basically blown off by the company, who kept adding content, the, excuse me, the philosophy that studio wildcard developers here. The producers, I believe, are called... What were their names again? Let's see here, it has them as developer and producer, but there's a new production company. I can't remember, but it's the... Uh, Snail, was it called? I don't know. But the, the, the approach they were taking with this game was to just keep adding content. If something was unbalanced, which is another thing people... Players were asking for balancing. They were asking for bug fixes, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, their, their way to solve anything that was out of balance was to nerf something, which is usual, um, kind of the developer shorthand, especially in modern times. Something needs to be balanced, they'll just nerf the fuck out of it. And, um, and that was their take on it, and that's the most they did. You know, naturally players, you know, kept issuing the same... Uh, making the same complaints, and the company basically ignored them. Um, and then the paid DLC was announced, 
and people started now getting pretty uppity. Um, because naturally, like I said, the, when you go into early access, people are pay, paying you to play the game. This is an entirely new um, way to make money on games. Traditionally, like I said, the producers fronted the money. You made the game, you had to finish the game to make anything back off. But now with early access, you don't have to finish. You can put it out to get that extra bit of money, you know, mid-development, as you would, to, I guess, keep things going. Now, some companies, I remember when Subnautica was still in development, uh, they said they had trouble reaching their goal because there was a big hurricane and the offices had been flooded, so they basically had to rebuild the company. Which I can understand. Um, there was no flooded arc. <laughs> the closest excuse arc had at the time, and they didn't use this, but I'm bringing it up to start with, is uh, they were the subject of a lawsuit that I think eventually settled for around $60 million. I can't say how much that lawsuit was costing at the time, because it, it, I don't think it was settled for a while. So, But that was the justification some people used. For now selling DLC that at the time was about the same price as the game itself it was about at the time roughly $20 to get early access arc and then another $20 to play what would be known as extinction uh, and when players brought this issue up to developers the response they got was that <laughs> uh, let me let me phrase this correctly here okay the response was something along the lines of, uh, we've developed basically a whole new game here. Now again, if you're familiar with Ark and you know Extinction, you're probably already laughing. <laughs> we've made basically a whole new game here. Uh, if you don't want to pay us for it, you're basically being cheap. And, We're not putting a gun to your head, they said. This was their words. We're not putting a gun to your head. Don't buy it if you don't want it. But you're being... <laughs> they, they actually called the fans cheapskates. And, uh... <laughs> and later on, that same developer went on to say something along the lines of this guy was just raging. You know, who, who made the question in the first place. So, that response took a fan base that was already upset about being charged for content that isn't done, that they're still paying for, that hasn't been optimized, that hasn't been balanced, and and they're being charged again for at a new map. Okay, now, yeah, Extinction added a lot of things. Was it a whole new game's worth of content? No, no one's going to say that. No one's going to say Extinction was a new game. So that is the developers being blowhards and taking it out on the fans. So despite all this... You know, people still apologize for Ark. Like I said, they they tried to make a case for the the lawsuit being the cause, the need for more funds. Uh, the game saw full release a year later. Another round of money coming through. We continue to release paid DLC. There was, uh, I believe, Aberration was up next, along with um, <laughs> I, I can't remember all of them, and they're not even listed here now. But the yeah, Aberration came next, then Extinction, and then the two Genesis parts. That's what you paid for. Had to pay for it. I remember uh, when it was released on consoles, I, I had it on the PC, but my PC died. So I had to get it on console. On console, it was full price. It was $59.99. The DLC was like $20 to $30 per map is what you were paying. And yeah, again, they added things... Uh, the new, you know, Extinction would talk about, like, there's 15 new creatures in it, you know, in Aberration, you know, in uh, Scorched Earth, they added stuff like the Golem, the Wyverns, and uh, Grasshopper Insects, new uh, weather features, you know, um, they added stuff, but it really wasn't a whole new game's worth of stuff, you were paying for that's a lot of money for a deal for a new map, okay, and a few new things to go with it. So it's <laughs> they've always they keep charging and they just keep adding content. Meanwhile, the game never got optimized, and like I said, the balance was the the shorthand. It was just nerf something, move on, and um, 
And so, so in my opinion, this is already a Rocky developer you're dealing with. You know, this is a company that's showing signs of greed and uh, maliciousness towards their own fans. They're, they're just doing this for the money, right? If they had a vision, if they cared about making a quality product, uh, this would have played out very differently. As far as I'm concerned, ARK never went gold. Okay, so that's, that's how ARK went. Now, the new controversy, surrounded by ARK Survival Ascendant. Now, originally, uh, the devel one of the developers announced that they were going to do a remake of ARK with the Unreal 5 engine. The original ARK was made with Unreal 4, so they were redoing it with Unreal 5 as part of the sequel. ARK 2 was coming out, and they're like, don't worry, we're going to upgrade the original as well. Um, and it was going to be free. Later on, uh, the producers walked that back, came back and said, uh, it's going to be in a bundle. You're going to get you know, pre-order ARK 2, you'll get ARK Survival Ascendant, the remake of ARK Survival Evolved. And uh, it's going to cost, I think when it was first announced, it was announced at around $50, $49.95 or something. Okay, but it doesn't come with any of the DLC for the original ARK. Uh, that you're going to have to pay for later. Okay, which, you know, it would have been one thing, but uh, fans would have, were already upset that the the update wasn't going to be free. But on top of that, having to pay for DLC and more, they were going to shut down the ARC servers. Now, these are the official ARC servers. For all intents and purposes, you'll still be able to play ARC Survival Evolved single player. You'll still be able to play on any private servers you know about, you know. Uh, so, it's it's not killing the game completely. It's not like they're installing something that's going to remove the game from your computer and prevent you from getting it again. The most they might do, I could see them doing it, is taking down the original game and its DLC from the Steam store and possibly Epic Games, in which case you can probably still get it from CD Keys or some website like that. But regardless, it's, yeah, they're shutting down the servers. You can't play on official servers. As of some time this year, it's going to get shut down because supposedly... Uh, the new game's coming out, uh, the remake's coming out sometime this year. So, uh, the, and the funny thing is, a lot of the optimization, the quality of life improvements that should have been added to Ark Survival Evolved when it went gold, is now being added to the remake. So, yeah, if you want your Ark experience to be smooth and uh, a little more balanced, you're gonna have to wait for that one <laughs> if you already bought the previous one well you know fork out some money and uh so it didn't go over well with fans that uh that they were shutting down the old servers and that they were uh going to charge for the game all over again after they said it was going to be free so they canceled that bundle and came up with a new bundle uh so that Ark Survival Ascendant will include the paid DLC, but it will not include Ark 2 anymore. And uh, they're charging more money for it. It's up to $60 now, I believe. Um, so you're paying more, and the DLC is not going to come out at the same time as the game. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be staggered. It's going to take a couple years to get all the DLC again for the remake of the original game. So again, this is content that's already available for the original game. And if you purchased it, like I said, back in the day, it was expensive. Uh, you would now have to repurchase it. So, again, fans still aren't happy. This isn't anything like they were looking forward to. Uh, nothing else from the company, as far as the franchise has gone, has come along. There was supposed to be a television show uh, starring Vin Diesel. There was supposed to be... Uh, there hasn't been any footage at all of Arc 2. Nobody has any idea what they're in for. There's There's been story cutscenes, you know? Cinematic trailers. No gameplay. So a lot of people are still unsure about Arc 2. They don't know if they want to jump in. And uh, with all this screwy business now going on with uh, the remake, it's uh, it's been, as the title suggests, a beautiful train wreck. <laughs> um... A lot of people are trying to blame the producers instead of Studio Wildcard, but like I said, Studio Wildcard has been specifically quoted uh, being very nasty, dealing with the people that play their games, that they sell their product to. So, 
I, I can't blame one company or the other as far as I'm concerned. Any company involved in producing this has been pretty shit about it. So that's that's my opinion on the matter. <laughs> uh, you know, the game itself, like I said, it's not a bad game. Um, it had some rough edges. It needed to be finished. Instead of, like I said, this company over and over again, they were cheaping their way out. You know, they went to early access to make some extra money. They released early to paid DLC to make some extra money. Then they went into gold without actually going gold, you know, without finishing the game to make more money. You know, and it's just, it's, it's all just about that cash cow with this company. You know, this is just quick cash, cash, cash. So, uh, you know, that's... That is the whole picture as far as I've managed to gather. And like I said, the other DLCs that came along, there's there's no lawsuits that come with those. So, like I said, they're just charging you for maps. Also, there's evidence in uh, with Survival Ascendant, I believe, as well as with Arc 2, that they are trying might be trying to work in microtransactions. And... Um, also, that they want to charge people to mod the game now is apparently going to be a thing. So that is, uh, I can't imagine that's going to sit too well with anybody. Um, <laughs> so it might be, if anything, it might be a good time to grab the old game because it's due to the review bombing it's been getting because of all this recent controversy. Uh, the game is actually quite cheap right now on Steam if you wanted to pick it up. So yeah, it's something to keep in mind. I might keep it in mind myself. So, anyway, I hope you guys found this video interesting. Um, well, our video schedule for the week has been predetermined. We have a schedule now. We will be doing five-hour streams three times a week, minimum. Um, Monday is Outmodded Mondays, where we play retro games. Uh, this time around, we're doing the Ninja Turtles collection. I'm going to go through all of them, all the ones I have. And, um, after that, down the road, whatever, you can look forward to things like, uh, Sonic the Hedgehog I'd like to bring back, if I can do it without getting my channel yeeted. <laughs> if you guys haven't heard, Sega's been pretty aggressive lately at, uh, um, not just, um, striking, not just copyright striking, but actually channel striking channels for uploading footage of Sonic the Hedgehog, mostly for the new game. So I don't think it'll affect the retro footage, but still, something to keep in mind. Um, and also down the road, some Castlevania and some other stuff. I got lots of old games I'd like to play on there, and some Mario Brothers. You know, we'll we'll stretch it out. Uh, Tuesdays are Tuesdays of Terror. Tuesday Night Terror is for horror, which I'm probably going to use for horror action, kind of a combo deal. For, uh, last week we did Seven Days to Die. This week, I'm not sure yet, I was going to do Resident Evil 2, but I might do a one-shot just to be romantic of something else. So, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. And, uh, sporadic, I meant to say, not romantic. But that's what we got to look forward to. So, anyways, uh, and Wednesday night, Wednesday night is Epic Wednesdays when I do role-playing games. Currently, Digimon, uh, we're almost going to wrap up Cyber Sleuth soon. But Cyber Sleuth sequel, Hacker's Memory, will be up after that. And beyond that, we'll probably be doing some Final Fantasy, some, uh, I'd like to do some Breath of Fire, some Sukoden, whatever I can try to squeeze in there, um, I would like to do. So, I got a lot of plans for that, and there's always, uh, plenty of other things to fall back on. Um, so hopefully I'll see you guys again later this week. Till next time. This is Mr. Grimm signing off. Thanks for watching or listening. Take it easy.